Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday's edition of Verusal Education Live. We are pleasure to have you here with us today. We thank you very much. Today I have a special guest, special educator, Mr. Q Paulson. Q is coming from us from Florida today, from our Life of Raleigh distributor in Florida there. Q, how you doing out there today, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. I'm glad to be here today. Thanks for everybody tuning in today. Like uh, Curtis said, my name's Q. I'm a school ambassador for Russell Pomade. I'm based in Florida. And I want to say uh, thank you to Life of Raleigh because they're allowing me to use their space today since the shop's busy. So let's go ahead and get into this. Normally when I get a client like Avery come in, I get real excited because he's got a nice tone to his hair. He's got a nice full head of hair. And how we're going to start off, we're going to thoroughly wet the hair. I know you guys have heard this before, but repetition is a key to success. So whatever you can do with wet hair, you can do with product. And the wet hair is also going to reveal, you know, any cowlicks, whirls. You can get an idea of exactly what kind of style you want to do because the hair is going to take its natural shape and fall. Another key to when you're wetting down the hair is you don't want to go too concentrate. You want to do a nice little mist so you get the hair evenly saturated all the way through. Try not to spray uh, your client in the face like I just did Avery just now. But as you can see, Avery's got a nice uh, head of hair. So today, normally what we do with Avery when he comes in is I give him a close executive contour. We go pretty tight around the sides, party on the side, and it always turns out real great. But for the last two years since I've been cutting Avery's hair, I've been trying to pump it up a little bit. So today we're kind of getting to do what I want. And I'm really excited because I've never really seen his hair pumped up before. All right, so you can already start to see how his hair is going to lay throughout this haircut. You can already see, pump it up a little bit in the front. And it's going to look real good. So my plan today is to go in tight around the sides and leave as much length as I can on the top. So we get a nice pompadour shape. My water today, typically I put grooming tonic in there, or I mean the hair tonic. But today, Avery made sure to wash his hair before he came in. I don't want to have a good, clean, you know, hair that when I cut it, no other products in there. But typically, when you're working in the barbershop, you got clients coming in, they're getting off of work, They've been out running town most of the day and they've already got product in the hair. So a great thing to do is if you grab a little bit of the hair tonic, mix it in with your water, it's gonna turn, break down the product a little bit and make it easier for you to cut and style. And it's also got a great smell to it. And when clients walk into your barbershop, that's gonna be the first thing that they smell. All right, so. I like to work, I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to do a pompadour, how I work in the shop, and it always works for me. It's simple, it's easy, anybody can do it. And you're going to follow the natural hairlines of your client to achieve this look. So I'm going to use this hairline to find out where I want to get my first separation in the hair. I'm gonna go from this implant right here all the way back. Making sure to separate the hair on the top from the hair beneath the parietal ridge. All 
Now, Avery's got a couple squirrely hairs in that parting right there that want to kind of pop back down. It's a good thing Avery can't see himself right now because what I typically do is I'll grab one of my extra combs, my combing, and I'll lock it in there to keep this hair on the top from falling down. Right, and as you can see, that parting runs right along his parietal ridge right here. So in recap, you follow this hairline right here and you bring it back and create your parting. And then that's where we're gonna do our baseline. The baseline is the most important part of the haircut because you wanna create a good guide right here and once you finish it, you want to be able to connect the hair on the top to the hair on the bottom. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the widest point of Avery's head. And that's always going to be right above the ear. When you look at somebody from straight on, you can see right here that this is the widest point of Avery's head, widest point of all of our heads. And you want to use that to create a nice square shape that you can guide off the rest of your haircut. Comb the hair down a little bit. I'm gonna comb it back up, catch all that hair in my comb. Determine the length right there that I wanna go off the rest of the haircut. Make sure you got it nice and elevated because that's gonna help create the graduation coming down. And I'm only gonna go about an inch and a half, maybe two inches out because you can always take more hair off. And this is just my rough sketch. I always cut the hair also when it's dry, so I don't want to take off too much hair while it's wet. And right there, you can see my first guy. Started right there at the wise point of Avery's head. And then I'm going to move back here, find my guy right there. You can see the hair. And create my second cut. I'm going to repeat that process all the way back to the occipital bone. You know, and I love working in the system. I do every haircut the same way. I create my baseline and then I come back in and connect the top. And for me, working in like a system like this is perfect for me because I like to work, you know, with a good system in place. So all the haircuts stay consistent. And all I'm doing It's going off my guide that I created and tapering down the hair as we start to get down towards the nape and the bottom of the hair. Continuing that process around the back. Looking good there, Q. I just want to let everybody know that if you got any questions for Q today, please post them in the comments and I'll be sure to get Q to answer your questions for you today. And again, yeah. thank you for joining us. Yeah. If you got any questions, make sure to ask them. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Avery, he's been seeing me for about two years now. I'm hoping he plays baseball for the high school. So I'm hoping one day when he breaks it into the big leagues, hopefully the Atlanta Braves, I'll become his uh, personal barber. We'll see. Not a Braves fan, are you, Q? I grew up in Georgia. And unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm a Falcons fan too. So that's rough right there being a Falcons fan, especially after that Super Bowl they had. All right, so... 
I still got some cleanup work to do, but this side right here is basically done. There's some areas around the ear that I need to come in tighter with my comb. Clean those little spots off. You know, your comb, the good thing about your comb is, it's basically a one and a half. If you use this back ridge right here, that's a one and a half. If you bring your clipper closer to the front, that's gonna be a one. So if you're working back here in the back, play with your comb, play with your clipper a little bit. You sit it right there, come up the back, and that's a one and a half. If you need to get down a little closer down here at the bottom of the, the taper, keep it closer to the front teeth, and that's your one. But this is absolutely my favorite way to work because you can make the haircut unique to your client. You know, some of your clients are going to have wrinkles in their head, indentions. There's going to be dark spots. If you put a guard on there, I'm not saying it's the wrong way to work, but if you utilize both of them, you can make your haircut even better. If you like using guards, you know, go ahead, get it, clean it up. But the problem with the guards is it's going to leave shadows in your hair from where it's just pressed up flat and doesn't get inside that indention. But if you grab your comb and say like right here, there's a little bit of a dark spot. I come in with my comb, come in a little closer to the hair, it fades out that dark spot just a tad more. It's getting in closer around the ears right here. All right. Now I think this side is basically done. Sorry, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I like to work one side, move to the other. And I just like to keep my haircuts even and make sure anything that I see right now while the hair is wet is cleared off. All right. Here, so come in close right here, Roman. I just want to show everybody. As you can see, We've got a nice square shape. And this side is basically done. You can see how it's starting to slightly taper down towards the bottom right here. And then we've got the longer length at the top from our guideline. It's looking good. I'm getting excited. Like I said, I've never uh, gotten a chance to pump up Avery's hair before. So I'm just gonna go in the back right here. I see a little bit of a dark spot where I need to come in a little closer on my guideline. And this side is done. And we're gonna repeat this process on the same other side over here. One thing you wanna do while you're doing, cutting the client's hair is, you want to make sure the hair is saturated because if it dries, you're going to have these partings staying in the hair. So you want to make sure you want to continuously saturate the hair. You want the hair on this side just to be as saturated as it was on that side while you were working on that side. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to follow that implant or the hairline on my client right at the top here. Sit my comb in. Pull that hair back and create my parting right there on the parietal ridge. I've been listening to a lot of the other ambassadors and educators 
when they're doing their demos and they're coming up with some pretty good quotes that motivate them or influence them when they're cutting a client's hair. I've got my own quote. It actually comes from a lyrical poet back in uh, like the early 90s. And what he said was, cut like a ninja or slice like a ninja, cut like a razor blade. If there's a problem, yo, you'll solve it. So keep that in mind. If there's a problem that comes up, there's always a way to come up and fix it. Q, we got a question for you, buddy. Yeah, great. Douglas asks, I've had problems getting the hair in the comb. Any tips as like turning to angle or anything that may help explain those troubles? Comb technique is one of my struggles. It's getting easier. One told me up and then turn with the wrist. All right. Yeah, that's a great question, Thomas. So it might be easier to show you on this side. Um, what I like to do is I'll comb the hair down, the hair that I want to get into my comb, and then... I'll pull the hair up a little bit before I go in and cut it. That way you're already elevating the hair. And then once you do that, I find where I want to set my baseline and I just hold it right there. Usually most of the hair stays still. Sometimes you might want to check your clipper. They may not be taking off all the hair. They might need some adjustment or cleaning, but typically that'll work. Another thing you can do is you can use the grooming tonic. The grooming tonic is great. It's something you should play with. I use this in every haircut that I do. There isn't a hair, except a buzz cut. I don't use it in buzz cuts, but every haircut that I do, I use the grooming tonic. I got the spray version right here, but we also have the OG squeeze bottle and it serves great as a, a cutting lotion. So if you put it in the hair, it makes your parting stay a little easier. And it's a great cutting lotion. It may help you out as well when you're doing the clipper over comb. But great question, though. Great question, I sometimes Douglas. Sometimes I struggle. I struggle with that sometimes myself. Great question, Douglas. Gonna... Hope Q was able to answer that for you. Nick yeah. Fury has a question for you. He says, "What is your favorite product to use and why?" Nick, I would probably say everything in the line. How? What do you say, Q? I tell you, I love everything in the line. Good to see you on there, Nick. If you don't know, Thanks, Nick, Nick is actually one is actually one of our educators. He's only about 30, 40 miles away from me. We're kind of in the same area, but man, I love the greases. They're my favorite ones. When my hair was shorter, it's grown out longer now, but when my hair was shorter, I would always use the green. I love the green. And the second or third day that I had the green in my hair, it was perfect. I love the second or third day. First day is great, but there's something about the second or third day where it kind of moves around in the hair, covers all the hair follicle, and it just, it just lays a lot better so we're going to repeat the same process on this side that we did on the previous side lift the hair up a little bit like uh, I was talking to Thomas about find where I want to set my baseline and take all that hair off then I'm going to step back and move to the back. Another good rule of thumb is to use the highest point, the apex of your client's head, and use that as your pivot point. Because you always want to have the section that you're cutting right in front of your body. So if you use that as your point of reference and rotate around it, it's a good visual point for me when I'm working on a client's hair. I'm gonna come back in here in the next panel, find that guide from my previously cut section. And keep on following that parting towards the back. All right, so I've already done this panel right here. I'm going to come back to the widest point of Avery's head, right above the ear, scoop the hair up, and find my previous guideline right there. 
Roman, if you will, you step in right over here so the clients can see it in the phone there. Scoop the hair up. If my hand's not in the way, you can see your guide right there. And this is all the hair that I need to take off. And just to follow up on Douglas's question too, I would probably say maybe change up your combs. I'm not sure which comb you're using. We like the wall clipper comb. That's just personal preference, but just depends on what comb you're using. Just to follow up on your question there, Douglas, thank you again. And all I'm doing is I'm finding that guide from my first cut section there, cleaning off any hairs I might have missed. and continue that process all the way to the back of the head. If you look at all the score on posters, I think pretty much everybody, if you're in this business, has seen them because Rob and Lean, they created some pretty incredible hairstyles that they put on those posters. I've got them hanging up in the shop that I work in. But all those hairstyles, they all get their names from the cool hair on top. You know, this right here is just your taper and fade. And it can drastically change, you know, if you're going from a razor fade to a longer. Uh, like long trim pompadour, but it's all this cool hair that on top gives those uh, those particular styles their names. So once I get done with this part, I start really getting excited because I'm starting to work with the cool hair that's up on top of the head. Thanks again for everybody that's tuning in. I wish I could see you. It's kind of weird times right now. Normally we're out at shows or in shops demonstrating these techniques in person to everybody. Both the current times, this is another great way for us to get to share a little bit of our knowledge with everybody. So thanks for everybody that's tuning in today. And all I'm doing still is cleaning up the nape. As you remember, if I keep my clipper on the back half of the phone here, that's going to be a one and a half. You can see the back of the head using my comb as my clipper guard and just cleaning up those hairs on the back of the nape. And if you want to go a little in tighter right down here at the bottom, let's get your clipper closer to the teeth. Play around with your clippers. Use that lever on the side. Right now my clipper is shut so I can take off the most hair as possible. But play around with that lever. Use your comb as a tool, as any other tool you have. So we're pretty much done with this side. 
come in here and get a close angle at the front of the head. So as you can see, we got a nice square shape with graduation coming down towards the bottom of my client's head. So the sides are pretty much done. Now, of course, there's going to be little wispies and stuff in here that I'm going to have to come back and clean up. I'm going to do that when the hair is dry and kind of make sure fine tune it into my client's head a little bit. But the haircut is already basically there. All we need to do now is connect the hair that's on top with the hair that's on the bottom. So once again, make sure my hair has even depthness all the way around. Because you've cut the hair and it's slightly drier on one side than it is on the other side. The cuts are going to be different because you cut one side at a certain level of saturation. And then the other side kind of dried during that process, like me, where I took like 10 minutes just to put my guideline on one side. So you just want to go through and keep the hair at the same level of saturation all the way through. All right, so now it's time for my next parting. And like I like to keep my sections and partings when I'm working in the shop as simple as possible. We're gonna use that guide that we talked about earlier where we started at the widest point of Avery's head. We're gonna use that to create our next section. The widest point of Avery's head should also be pretty much the highest point. And that's where we wanna create our next parting. Douglas just wanted to say thanks, Q. Give some great information. Oh, thanks, Douglas. He's, Sorry. He's about four months in the class, so he's a barber student, oh, I'm yeah. assuming. And he said he's on his third cycle. I've watched all your videos multiple times and can't thank you guys enough. These are so good. Oh, yeah. Well, we thank you, Douglas. We do this for you, my friend, and keep tuning exactly. in. We will have we will continue to do these every Monday until the internet breaks. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again, Douglas. Sorry. Uh, I think I got your name wrong earlier when you asked your question. I'm sorry about that. I got this haircut on my mind right now. So I'm sorry I messed up your name. But thanks again for that question. It was a real good one. All right. So right here, you can see that I created another parting going to the highest point of the head. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my favorite shears in the whole wide world, the Mizutani's. These are actually the 6.5s. I like a larger shear because i got fat fingers. And if I use a smaller shear, I tend to nick myself a lot. But so we got this parting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a section out of that section and comb that down. And as you can see, you can see a little bit of a disconnection right here, because remember when we started the video, I said one of the most important things you got to do is you've got to be able to connect the cool hair on top with the shorter hair that's on bottom. So when you create that parting, you're going to have that hair that's disconnected. Another important thing is you want to sit your comb into that section that you just did and pull that hair down so you've got even tension on it. And the reason I like to do smaller sections like this is when the hair is wet and you go in to make your cuts, sometimes the shears that you use, if you're cutting wet hair that's thick, It'll push the hair back and it'll change the angle of your cut. So another trick that I like to do is I take smaller cuts on the hair. I don't go in with my shears and take it off on one time because sometimes your shears, they can push your hair back and make that connection exaggerated. 
So I like to use, I call it like a one, two, three, four technique. I've got the hair in my finger there. My previous guide from the baseline is right up against my fingers. We go one, two, three, four. And now this hair is connected to my guide on the bottom. And they didn't push the hair, creating an exaggerated um, guide. Because when you dry the hair, even when it's wet, you're going to see it. Same thing, three, four. That's a really good tip, Q. I hope everybody's taking notes on that one. Yeah, that's what I like to do. And Travis told me don't jinx us with the internet breaking. Travis, the way 2020 is going, brother, who knows? Now I'm taking another panel out of that section that I just did. And I'm going to overdirect all that hair back over to my guideline. And it's pretty close for the most part, but I want to make sure. So sit my comb in that parting and pull all that hair down. Find my guide and just refine that a little bit by taking off the extra hair. I don't think it's gonna happen, but if your client comes in with super long hair and you're doing this haircut and you have all this extra length on top, you can go further out and create another panel and see if there's any hair that's disconnected. I see a little tiny bit right there. And I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit. When we get done with this other side, the hair is gonna be a little heavy right back here in the back because we're over exaggerating everything over this side. So it's gonna be a little heavy right here. We're gonna come back and clean that up after we get done with the other side over here. Go back and separate my section a little bit. And I'm going to take a panel out. Bring that hair down, over exaggerate it, and bring it off to the side. And you can already see right here, it's pretty close to already matching my guideline. I've cut Avery's hair for over two years. So. I know what his hair is going to do. I cut his hair last and I do the same thing pretty much every time because Avery likes the same haircut. So the guide's already pretty much there. But sit my comb in that parting, bring all that hair down. Let me bring, turn over here so y'all guys can see. It's a little easier on the side. So if you see right there is my guide. And right here is all the hair that I need to take off to connect the top to the bottom. Once again, using my one, two, three, four technique so that it doesn't push all the hair in a direction I don't want it to go. I'm going to bring all the hair down. And there you go, you guys, you can see right there where my guideline is and the hair that I need to take off. I should probably warn you guys, I wear glasses and I have a habit of using my middle finger to push my glasses back up my face. So I'm being conscious of it today, but if you see me do it, please realize I'm not uh, shooting anybody the bird. It's just a habit of mine. I've gotten in trouble for it before. People think I'm flipping them off, but I'm not. I'm just pushing my glasses back up on my face. They're always sliding down. So put my comb in that parting again and bring all that hair down. Find my guide and just take off small sections of the hair, making sure I don't push any of that thick hair in a direction that I don't want it to go, that I'm in constant control of my haircut. I'm gonna take another section it shouldn't need to be, if any needs to be cut, there shouldn't be that much. 
And I'm bringing all that over. And as you can see, it's pretty even. I don't need to take off any extra. Now, if you've done this right, come over here, son. You're going to see that the hair is heavy back here in the back. And that's because we're over exaggerating all the hair off to the side. And when you comb it back, it's going to come out heavy. So what you can do is you can comb all that hair from both sides. Bring your fingers out. You can see where my guide needs to be to connect it to the bottom right there. And that should take out some of that weight that you had there. Now, when the hair is dry, I'm going to come back in there again. And we're going to take off, clean it up a little bit, make it more personable towards uh, Avery style. But you can always take off more. You can never put the hair back on. So I always like to be a little more reserved. I like to see what the hair is going to look like when it's dry. I'm going to go in and just dampen the hair a little more, making sure we keep even saturation all the way through. I like to use when a client's hair is a little longer, I like to use my pick or my, uh, my vent brush. So it doesn't pull and snag the client's hair as much. You want to make the experience in the chair as pleasurable and legal as possible. So once again, we're going to use the natural implants and lines of my client's hair to create my next party. This time, where previously we used this line right here, hairline right here, and created our baseline or our guideline. I'm going to use his temple right here to create my next guide, right there. Going back towards the apex of the head, separating that hair a little bit. And you can see now we've got that disconnection right there on the side, right in that area right there. So we need to connect this longer hair right in this area, in this new section that we made with the uh, with our guide that's right there. All I'm wanting to do right now is I'm just trying to make a sub panel of that section and bring that hair down. You're not normally this close to me, son. I like it though. I like that you're getting close to your dad. If you guys don't know my, uh, my 12 year old son, he's working the camera for me today. He's gonna have a birthday in about a month, but he's helping out his dad. I just want to make sure that that section that I had is exactly where I wanted it. All right, so. Bring that hair down and you can see right there where we need to connect the hair. I've got fat fingers. I have a hard time a lot of times bringing my hair in there or my hand in there, keeping it in the guide and holding the hair. So sometimes you can use your hand, your, your comb and your shears and just freehand it and make that connection. I think this time though, I can be able to squeeze my fingers in there. So let's see. And there we are. Spin my client around a little bit. 
you can see my guideline right there. I'm gonna use the same one, two, three, four technique. And connect that hair. Take another section. Repeat the same process. Comb the hair up a little bit. Set my comb in that parting. Find my guide. It's right there. One, two, three, four. Just going back in making sure that I've got all the hair cleaned up right there, connected to my guide. Take another section or sub panel, bring it down. Now as you can see, that hair doesn't create any disconnection. It's already connected. Except for a little small wisp of hair right there towards the temple. Take that off. This side is basically done. I'm gonna repeat the same process on this side. It's a great system, you know. It's like uh, second nature to me. You keep going through the same process enough, it becomes like muscle memory. And you don't have to think about it that hard. You can think more about the detail work of your haircut instead of concentrating on all the steps that you need to take to achieve it. All right. That so brings once again, up a good point there, Q. Douglas also said if partings look easy, I found that it isn't. Douglas, it just takes practice, my friend. Just yeah. keep practicing. Yeah. yeah Four Douglas, months the, in, buddy. Yeah. I'm the same way. And like uh, Curtis has said, you're just starting out in this process. Your real, your real education begins once you get in the barbershop. The school is going to give you the foundation, but once you get behind the chair and you start cutting it every day, then that's when the real education is going to start. Because every client that you have that comes in, you know, the next person that I, whose hair I cut after Avery is going to be totally different. It's not going to be the same. And that's one of the great things about this job is nobody's the same. And once you get in the shop, that's when the real education really begins because you get to implement all the things that you learned in school, plus from all the videos that you've been watching. So you're doing a really good thing by watching all these uh, educational videos. You're only making yourself better. Keep investing in yourself. So what I'm gonna do next is the same thing that I did on the previous side. I'm gonna follow the natural hairline of my client right there. To create my next section. Don't be afraid to use the grooming tonic. The grooming tonic is great for sectioning the hair. It's an overall great product. It's probably my favorite product and one of the best uh, best sellers that we have in the shop. We sell it quicker than we sell anything else because clients are so impressed by it. So right here, I've got all this hair combed down from the top section right there. And you can see the disconnection from the guideline that we created at the beginning of the haircut to the section that we just took. Now that there's not much hair that needs to come off. So instead of doing a sub panel, I'm gonna try to get it all with it, it all combed down. So just put my comb in there, put my comb back in my party, make sure I got even tension on the hair. And this is where my fat fingers start to create a problem for me. Find that guideline that I had to take off the excess hair. Q, Jane has a question. Is there a limit in age to start barbering? Jane, I would probably say whatever the school limit would be as far as age. I know I started quite young because my mother was a hairdresser. 
but I believe that would be according to your state or where you live at. But as far as the limit in age, I don't believe there is. Yeah. And another great thing to do is if you have a passion for this and you know it's what you want to do, go to a shop, go to a salon or a barber shop and ask if you can shadow an apprentice there. So if you, even if you're not in school, you can watch all the other stylists that are in the shop working all day and you'll be picking up things every day that you're in the shop just from watching and learning. If they have an age requirement. And I do believe some states also have some programs in their high schools. So I know some guys that do a barbering course while they're in high school prior to them actually graduating. Like I said, it'll probably depend on your state that you live in there, Jane. But thank you for your question. I don't think it's ever too early to start anything in life, whether it be barbering, video games, what it have be. Yeah, great question, Jane. So as you can see, I did a little freehand shear over comb work right there in the temple just because my fingers were a little too big to get in there. Lifted the hair up and took off the excess hair. Now, if you've done this correctly, the only thing that you have left is the long hair that's in the front. And this is where the pompadour gets all of its uh, style and flavor from. So you want to leave this a little longer. But what I usually do is I'll change my shears out. I mean, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. But I like to take my blenders. And I like to connect the bangs with the with the sides here with my blenders. So right here, you can see it's a little bit heavy. I wanna leave most of this length that Avery has right here in the front, because that's what's gonna give us that height right up there. But you also, you wanna connect the rest of the hair with the front. So bring all that hair down. You want to over exaggerate this a little bit. Sorry, I almost did. I almost flipped everybody off right then. So what you want to do is you want to extend and over exaggerate. So you maintain that length right there. And then I'll take my blending shears. And just take off that hair. And connect it. You don't want to go too short in this area right here because this is where the pompadour gets all of its, its style and its name from. Over exaggerated again. Take off that excess hair. Right here, you can see that's my previous cut. This is what hasn't been cut yet, right there. Over exaggerate, bring it out again. And take off that hair. Just continuously working towards the front of the bangs, making sure we got a nice connection with the rest of the hair. And don't forget my quote that I mentioned earlier, you know, the lyrical poet from the 90s, Robert Van Winkle. Slice like a ninja, cut like a razor blade. Or I might have it backwards. All right. Be like Same water. Be like water. I'm going to find where the hair is disconnected, over-exaggerate. And take all that hair off. Take another section, bring it out. Just 
just continuing that process, taking off that excess hair. And there we go. This little long piece right here that I missed. All right. So we're pretty much done with the majority of the cutting now. Saturate the hair just a tad more. I'm going to show you guys a sweet little cocktail of mine. I saw Milky use something similar, but the grooming tonic that I mentioned earlier that I love so much, I do a cocktail with the fiber gel pomade or the fiber gel and the grooming tonic. The grooming tonic is great for thermal styling. The spray version has a little bit of a lighter hold than the OG squeeze bottle. And then I take about five squirts of the spray tonic, mix them together in my hands. And in my opinion, those two have probably some of the best smells of any product that I've smelled. Mix them together real good in your hands. And then I'm gonna work it into my client's hair, making sure to get down to the roots. Making sure to get full coverage in the hair. Now, this comes the fun part. You really start to see the magic happen now. Cute Dustin Jones. Welcome, Dustin. Dustin, how you doing today, buddy? He asked if those were seven inch shears you're working with. I believe they were 6.5s, correct, Q? Yeah. Yeah, there's a 6.5 squirrel Mizutani's. And if so, do you, f and if that's easier to work with when cutting the hair? It's all a real personal opinion for me. I like the larger shear. Some people, they like the smaller ones, but it really just comes down to what works best for you. I like to have a larger shear when I work. So now I'm about to blow dry Avery's hair. Thanks, Dustin. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. I know you got a, a fresh new package today with a nice little gift I figured you'd be putting together. Dustin won our puzzle giveaway on the Scorum page. Thanks for tuning in again, Dustin. One of our biggest fans. Thank you. You want to make sure you constantly got your blow dryer moving around. It helps with the natural fall of the hair and also not to overheat a certain part of your client's head. So I'm constantly moving my blow dryer around. I like to start off from the sides a little bit before I move to the top. Constantly keeping that blow dryer moving around. You can already see there's some little wispies that are popping out, and that's all right because I'm going to come back in when the hair is finished, styled, and dried and take care of any of those little imperfections that might come out in the blow dry. How am I doing on time, Curtis? Doing good, Q. Take your time, no worries. Oh, David Osborne joined a little late there, buddy. Can I watch from the beginning from your page? Yes. And you can also tune into our YouTube channel at Rusal Education in that search bar on YouTube. We will always keep these videos up. We do not remove them. So you can always catch a replay on Facebook and also on our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the Roosevelt Education page. Every week, there's a new educator with a video coming out on there. 
So make sure you hit subscribe so you stay up to date and all the great educators that are coming on and showing their techniques for the hairstyles. Smash that notification bell. I always wanted to say that. All right. So I'm about to move over to the other side of Avery's head. Constantly keeping my blow dryer moving around. I like to focus on the sides a little bit, kind of working panels when I'm blow drying too. So you can already start to see that shape that we cut in there starting to reveal itself. I'm just glad I got to choose the hairstyle today. I've been wanting to pump Avery's hair for so long. Avery does have a nice, great head of hair there. He does. That's why I get excited when he comes in. Nice color to it. Nice, thick head of hair. Doesn't get much better for everybody that loves this crap. You get those certain guys that come in and you're like, I hope they're coming to me. Find the other barbers to try to get them in your chair first. And as you can see, I'm really kind of blow drying the hair in the front off to the side a little bit. So use a couple different methods. You can try that. That'll give you the nice lift in the front. You don't have to go straight in on the front every time and lift up on the front like that. If you do that back and forth, that left and right, you'll achieve the same, same result. Oh, you're peacocking, Avery. You're going to walk out of here. All those girls at the front counter. I'm going to be eyeballing you when we're done. I'm just working on finish drying the hair. Got the sides in the front pretty much dry. The back center needs a little bit more. If you got a mirror, make sure that you're always using it. I've got a mirror off to the side over here, and that's what I was just staring off at, trying to get a profile look. Just trying to get down at the roots. Make sure you get the roots nice and dry because the roots or what determine how the hair is going to lay. If the roots are going off in a different direction, the hair is going to go in that direction. So make sure you got the roots nice and dry as well. Got a little more drying right back here in the back of the head. Keeping the blow dryer flat to the head. Don't want any volume back in this area. Want the hair to lie nice and flat. Make sure you use a, uh, a vent brush too. I forgot to mention that. It's gonna allow the air in the blow dryer to pass through. Let's play around with your tools too because 
You might want to use a comb. You might want to use a dimming brush to pull the hair a little tighter. All right, we're almost done. Get this little section right here. Now there's more than one way to skin a cat. So you can really do, if you want to create texture, you can go in there and do some point cutting or slice cutting, create texture. It's really up to you on how you want the finished product to look. I'm gonna show you as soon as I get this last little area dry, what I like to do. Now my blow dry is basically complete. Now you can see there's areas in there you need to go in and clean up a little bit. I like to do freehand with clippers. Spinning around here. Take out some of those areas that might have got missed when we were doing the uh, the initial cut of the hair. It's coming in. There shouldn't be too much that needs to be taken off at this point. You're just refining the details. A little bit of a heavy area back here in the back. I'm just gonna clean that up and lighten it with my clippers. Now you can do it any method that you want. You can use your blending shears. You can do it like what I'm doing with my clipper. And it's really up to you how you want to achieve the finished result. Now as you can see, it's starting to blend out a little bit right there. Got some heaviness right here. I'm gonna come back and take a look at. I'm just catching those hairs using my comb and my clippers. Making sure that I just take off a small amount because like we mentioned earlier, you can always take off more hair. You can't put it back on. You can see it's starting to take out that bulkiness that we had there, starting to clear it out. Fine tuning my haircut, making it unique to my client's head. His signature haircut, not my, uh, my previous client's signature haircut, but Avery's signature haircut. Using my comb as my clipper guard. Just cleaning up any areas that might have gotten overlooked. All right. So I think we're at a good point right here to show you uh, what I'd like to do next. Once again, I'll grab my thinning shears and just take a look at the top right here. Pull the hair up, find any extra length that may need to be taken off. I don't really use my, my blenders to thin the hair, but I use it to polish it off. Standing right over here, Roman. And as you see, it's I catch the hair in my comb and I bring it up. 
you can see what needs to come off. You're just following your guide. There's gonna be hair that is slightly longer than the rest. And that's what you wanna clear off. Looking good there, Q. As you're wrapping up there, if anybody has any final questions, be sure to put them in the comments and we'll get those answered for you as we come to a, an end for today. All right. I want to focus in back here on the back section of the head where it might be a little heavy, making sure that you take out some of that weight. We're not thinning the hair. We're just smoothing it out a little bit. Do one last little blow dry to catch any of that hair we just cut. Do my little head swish. Get my hair out of my face. All right. Hair's looking good. And that was blow dried with the uh, Ruzel gel and the spray tonic. So the bit haircut, I still need to do a little cleanup, but we're running tight on time. Next thing I want to use is one of our newest products, the Ruzel Grooming Cream. It serves almost as a leave-in conditioner. Avery's hair is really humid down here in Florida. It gets a little frizzy. This is, serves as a great moisturizer. You can use it on its own. I'm using it today for its moisturizing properties. Just to kind of control some of that frizz from the high humidity that we have down here in Florida right now. But you can already start to see that profile of the haircut come in. And it looks almost good like that. Of course, I need to run a comb through it, fine tune it a little bit. But all that texture looks pretty awesome. This almost finished hairstyle. Grab my pit. Help distribute some of that grooming cream throughout the hair a little bit more. And I'm actually gonna grab a little bit of the uh, Extreme Hold Pomade. That grooming cream is also gonna allow the Extreme Hold to glide through the hair a lot easier. So this is another one of our best sellers in the shop down where I work at. It's one of the newer ones. It's got a super strong hold to it, a sugary rum scent. And this stuff and the grooming tonic, we can't keep on the shelves. The grooming tonic serves as kind of a base for the hairstyle. And then the pomade, you come in on top for your finish work and kind of lock it in. Emulsify it in your hands. And what's great about the matte finish products is they all got that kind of milky white look to it. And they help you when you're trying to distribute through the hair. Because once you see that all the uh, the white is gone, then you know that you've got the hair and you got it worked in the right amount. Looking good. Take my pick. And it's another great tool to use because normally if you use a comb, you'd be pulling all those little kinks out from where you're putting the product in. So this slides through the hair a lot easier. I'm 
Mighty fine haircut there, Q. Mighty fine. Thank you. Well, I finally got to do what I've been wanting to do for a while and work a pompadour on the Avery's hair. Like I said, you normally like something a little more, a little more subtle, not so much peacocking, but go big or go home. Q, okay. if you give us a nice little spin there, my friend, let's see all the way around. We'll call it quits for today. That's a really fine haircut. Nice shape, nice form. I like it. You like it? It looks either? real good. Awesome. Be good. Q, I want to thank you, my friend. Thank we've you. come a long we've come a long way all the way back when you were just a model for us so i know I'm very very proud of you my friend very proud of you we want to thank life o'reilly for letting us use their facility and mr roman for being our cameraman today and happy early birthday to you my friend thanks for everybody that tuned in today thank you q ladies and gentlemen that'll bring us to a close for today i do want to mention next monday july 20th we have Mr. David Brokoff, a.k.a. Cheeseburger, will be back on Ruzel Education Live. We hope everybody will tune in. I want to thank you again for tuning in today. Have a wonderful afternoon, morning, and the rest of your week. And we will see you Monday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you again, and we'll see you next week.